Praise the Lord and welcome to our weekly 30-minute podcast, The Elephant in the Room with Bishop Michael Bellamy. Our podcast will cover various topics that are often overlooked, misunderstood, or even controversial from a biblical perspective. We're blessed to have a team of wonderful producers who want to make each episode something that will be enjoyable and informative. Doing this episode... We'll talk about making marriage work. Marriage requires individuals to be devoted to and making decisions in the best interest of the family. My guests are Elder Jeffrey and Evangelist Carletta Jones. Today's podcast was produced by Associate Pastor Corey Lyndon Bellamy Sr. It was edited by Lady Satoya Clanton and Brother Howard Harris. I'll be right back with today's episode. Praise the Lord and good evening, Elder and Evangelist Jones. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So glad to have you with us on The Elephant in the Room, talking about something that I think that you are very qualified to talk about, and that is making marriage work for openings um can you tell me how the two of you met well we met actually in high school i married my high school sweetheart some almost 31 years ago so we met in high school was it what they call love at first sight well for me it, it was love at first sight for me i was sitting at a table with one of my friends and I saw my wife, which was uh, somebody that I wanted to talk to from across the room. And I told a friend that I was sitting next to, I said, that's the girl I'm going to marry. I'm going to have all my children by. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, You had a lot of confidence. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) we must have thought I was crazy, but that actually came true, so. Well, Evangelist, was it uh, was it love at uh, first sight for you, or did you think that guy was just out of his mind? I mean, I saw him around school, and I kind of liked him, but I wouldn't say that I was in love with him because I didn't even know his name. But um, as we grew, I would say my love for him grew. It was not the first time I laid eyes on him. So, um, Elder Jones, uh, this may be personal. How did you hook her? <laughs> well, well, actually, it was through a mutual friend of ours, mm-hmm. you know, that I sometimes tease her about. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually used to say that that was her first boyfriend, but they were just friends. So it was actually through a mutual friend of ours from high school. So how long did this process take from you prophesying that <laughs> that that you were going to marry her and she was going to have all of your babies <laughs> to you all actually having your your first date well it didn't take very long you know i found myself doing crazy stuff like and i consider it crazy because it's not something i did before like walking her to class and i would just see her and then we were stuck up a conversation and i wind up walking her class and carrying her books, which was just, you know, something that I just didn't do. So we actually went on a date. I think our first time that we went out was to a pizza hut. And she didn't think that I remember that, but we went to a pizza hut, you know, and she always get me about this corny line that I, <laughs> that I use about her eyes or something. But she messes with me now because of that. But yeah, that's kind of like our first date. Well, it sounds like corny. Corny and pizza works. <laughs> <laughs> now, so you dated. How long did you date? And I'm asking this because this is a question that I hear quite often um, among our young singles. They want to know how long should a person date before getting engaged and then moving on into marriage? How long did the two of you date? Technically, we've dated 
almost two years before we got married. Mm -hmm. So almost two years. It was not a traditional Mm -hmm. marriage or dating scenario. We did not grow up in the church like a lot of the couples do now. But about two years we dated. Did it seem like forever? No. (laughs) (laughs) Even today, like when I do the math, Really, it's been that long. Speaking of long, how long have you been married? We've been married exactly 30 years and a few <laughs> weeks now because we're coming up to be 31 this month on the 27th of February. So it'll be 31 years this month. Wow. Well, congratulations. 31 years, and um, you married her, and she's had all of your babies. So uh, that worked out quite well. (laughs) What I say to people is we've been married this long, and we still like each other. (laughs) Now, that's amazing. (laughs) That's amazing. Well, according to our faith and, and biblical principles, we know that marriage is ordained by God. Do you believe that marriages are made in heaven? <laughs> now that question, uh, when I when I looked at it, I looked at it two different ways. I know that the ordinance of God is where marriage is based, but marriage, in my perspective, is a very natural thing. You know, because when the Lord said it's not good for man to be alone. So now when he gave Eve to Adam, I consider that the natural part of it. But we know that because it came from God, it is very spiritual. So that would be my answer for that question. So do you think that God put the two of you together? Do you think that was God? Do you think that was God speaking through you when you said that you were going to marry her and she was going to have all of your babies? <laughs> That that that's funny, uh, because I'm gonna be honest. I, I can't say that 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 was directly God, but I I just knew, you know, I just knew, and I was convinced. I actually was convinced at that time. So, uh, Evangelist Jones, what is your perspective on marriages being made in heaven? We know that marriage is ordained by God, but do you believe that God? puts people together and when God puts people together 31 years later they still like each other (laughs) (laughs) I would have to say I can only speak for myself you know and I would say that based on our relationship and so many things in our relationship that make in broken English no sense is that you know, the easiest answer is that it had to be God (laughs) because um, there is no way that, you know, statistically, you know, looking at marriages that Mm -hmm. people who are married as teenagers are Mm -hmm. going to be successful enough to be able to continue to be married because, you know, the divorce rate is high. You know, it's, it's high when you're not a teenager. So, you know, teenagers, you know, have an increased uh, risk for divorce, separation, and things not working out. And only God is able to surpass all of those statistics. So I would say that our relationship had to be from God. What is what is, what is your secret, uh, Evangelist, for after 31 years, um, having him still like you? Do you still like me? <laughs> <laughs> this is so cute. <laughs> Um, what is our secret? Well, you know, I'll be honest with you. You know, there's been a lot of challenges just as far as us growing from young adults through adults, you know, to having children, to all the different changes and cycles of life and being married. So for me, you know, I look at my husband and my relationship with my husband as a part of my worship to God. And because I worship God and I want God to be pleased in every area of my life, of course, I want my marriage to be successful. So I try to do those things that help us to be successful from my viewpoint. 
So, so marriage is marriage is not just a, a physical, emotional thing for you. Marriage is also spiritual. Yeah. It's a, it's a part of your worship. And I've never, I've never heard anyone describe it like that before or say it like that, that their marriage is spiritual. It's part of their worship. Well, yeah, I mean, if you read, the, when I read the Bible, I see that, you know, God has apostles and the people who wrote the Bible. They have some very distinct expectations and commandments or even just suggestions for women as to how we should, you know, possess our vessels and mm -hmm. raise our children and love our husband and all of those things and serve others. And so just as a part of me being who I am, you know, I incorporate each of those areas as a part of my life. Elder Jones, other than being handsome and being one of the uh, best dressers that I've seen, uh, what is your what is your secret for her still liking you after 31 years? Uh, you know, I've talked to younger couples and I think it's it's about sacrifice. You mm -hmm. know, a marriage is not built on I get it all type mentality it's, mm -hmm. it's when you bring sacrifice to the table you have the opportunity to actually be a part of the marriage because you're bringing something and if you both are bringing sacrifice to the table then that says that i'm giving a part of myself so my take on marriage is to make sure that i'm looking at those things that my wife has a desire for because her desire should be to her husband so now I look at those desires and I weigh those things and to make sure that I'm either come close to it or either hit the mark because those are those events where she says, I really appreciate you doing these certain things for me. So that's kind of what I look at, especially in my latter day, you know, being older, you know, and being a little bit more pliable, you know, in the relationship um, because sometimes we can get stuck you know, in mm -hmm. what we want and mm -hmm. our things that we want to do. So those are some of the things that I, I kind of take a look at. Now, how old were both of you when you married? Oh, my goodness. Elder Jones does the math and tells people this almost every time he gets up to preach. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you have that in your, do you have that in your notes, Elder Jones? <laughs> actually, it's actually written on the tables of my heart. So I just, I mention that because I, I do appreciate the the lasting years and the longevity that God has given us in our marriage. So I'll be remiss if I don't mention it because we have younger ones that are listening and they're probably aspiring to be us one day. Mm -hmm. So my wife was 17, okay. you know, when, when she got married. And it's funny because her mom had to sign the papers and she said, she looked at me, and I was 18, and she looked at me, she says, now she's your responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> so you all married, you married young, 17 and uh, 18 years old. You've been married together going on 31 years. And how many children do you have? We have four, okay. four children. And what are their age ranges? Well, my oldest is 29, mm -hmm. you know, and my youngest is 23. Then we have the two in between. We have Janice, that is 24, and Javen, that is 28. So they had the two together. They're all grown. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. We have people is what I tell you. Yeah. yeah. I have children, I have people. And, mm -hmm. and, how many grand, and how many grandchildren do you have? We have six. Grandchildren. What a blessing. Yeah. What a blessing. Yeah. When we think of marriage, there are always pillars in place to help support our marriages. And 31 years, I know you have pillars. We touched on some of those with Evangelist Jones saying that she sees marriage from a spiritual perspective. How important is communication, intimacy, and respect in your in your relationship? I would say that those are definitely important. Now, there are different levels of communication that we experience, right? 
Sometimes it's um, on a good level or a productive level, and sometimes it's not where we don't see eye to eye, right? That's a part of being married. You didn't marry yourself. You married a different person with different thoughts and perspectives. But communication, intimacy, you know, we make sure we make it a part of our plan to have a date night or time together um, whenever we can. And we always, you know, go out on a date. And then also, you know, just our mutual desire to please God, to be pleasing to God. So let's talk about that communication piece. Um mm-hmm. And and not saying eye to eye, because I think that happens in in all marriages, having that discussion and, and, and it doesn't go as well as, you know, you hoped that a decision has to be made. Who who makes the the final decision in your marriage or do you just uh, flip a coin? I guess it depends on how important the issue is mm-hmm. or how pressing the issue is. I prefer, you know, this is not something that it may not work for every marriage, but I prefer to discuss things with my husband. You know, I, I want to know what he's thinking. What does he think that we should do in this situation? You know, based on his experiences and just different things like that. What is your perspective about this? So you you, you want input? <laughs> you want you want input from from him before mm-hmm. final decisions are made. Absolutely. Now, do you let him make the final decision or do you just uh, get his input and then and then take whatever uh, his thoughts are and compare them to yours and say, okay, well, this is what we need to do? I mean, and like I said, it really depends on the mm-hmm. issue. And sometimes it's just like, okay, Elder John, what are we doing today? Like, mm-hmm. what is it? Like, and then he'll say, well, this is what I think we should do and this is what we're going to do. Like, okay, well, this is what we're doing. You know, Part of being married, you're going to have to concede sometimes. It's not always going to be your way, your Mm -hmm. idea. You know, it's the best idea. It's my philosophy, even if it's not your idea. You know, and sometimes you may not fully agree with 100%, but because he's my husband and he's the head of our house, I'm going to follow and I'm going to support that. Can you, can you, can you say, can you say that for the, for the, for the people sitting in the back row? Always easy. I'll just be honest, you know. I'm not being transparent. Your 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 husband your husband is the head of your house. He is. He is. A lot of people think it's me, which is funny to me. Mm-hmm. I'd be like, if it was up to me, <laughs> it's a whole lot differently. But no, my husband is the head of our home. He's the head of our relationship. You know, if it's something that's really pressing for me, I'll say. Okay, honey, but I really think this, 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 and it. But I don't really say that a lot so that he'll pay attention to it if I'm putting a rebuttal out there that this is that I feel strongly about this. So Is he also the spiritual is he also the, the spiritual leader in your home? He is. Mm-hmm. How important is that to you for him to be the spiritual leader? Well, just the dynamic of our relationship, mm-hmm. you know. You have to know us to know that in essence, we grew up together okay. <laughs> from teenagers. So there are some aspects of our relationship that are almost sister and brother like where we don't see things eye to eye or we're competitive in some areas. So that part of our relationship is also a factor when it comes to things like um, how we make decisions. Mm-hmm. But when it comes mm-hmm. to spirituality, mm-hmm. um, because he's a leader in our church, he's a leader in our home, he's a leader in our family dynamic with our children and everyone, you know, then I have to set those things aside, you know, so we try to separate the leader at church, at home, although he's still a leader at home. Okay, so that know. that kind of reminds me of what um, Lady Gwen says when, when we get home. Uh, she said, you're bishop at the church, but when you get home, you're Mike. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> elder elder jones um who is the one that makes the most concessions well um uh, wow that's that's a big one um and my wife's looking at me right now <laughs> <laughs> i wish i wish i were there to see the look on her face <laughs> oh my god well i would think and that's just my opinion I think she makes a few more than I would, just mm-hmm. a few more. There's that uh, that competitive nature 
uh, as it relates to our relationship and the dynamic that we have and we share together. Just depending on what's going on at the time, who will make the concession? Because if we're in a discussion, you know, or what my friend used to call a heated fellowship. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds very friendly. <laughs> <laughs> About a topic, it just depends on who will understand where it's not profitable. Mm-hmm. Continue uh, with the conversation. We'll find out who uh, will concede at that point. Okay. But uh, cons- concession, it, it, it just depends. So <laughs> concession uh, is, is made on both sides, you know. And I can say that I give her a, a, a 60-40 split. You know, I won't give her the 70-30, but I give her a 60-40 split. Oh, well, that's good. No wonder you all like each other. <laughs> so, <laughs> I give her a 60-40 split on that one. All right, we're going we're gonna to take a break and we'll come right back, okay? Okay. This is Bishop Michael Bellamy. I hope you enjoy our podcasts and subscribe to our Facebook page. You will find our weekly 30-minute podcast on many of your favorite platforms. Would you please tell your family and friends to listen in as well? We would also love to hear from you. Please feel free to connect with us on Facebook and via email at the elephant 2022 at gmail.com. My guests today are Elder Jeffrey and Evangelist Carletta Jones. We're talking about making marriages work. How do you resolve conflict? Every marriage has conflict. Now, you were very generous with the 60-40. She makes more concessions than you do. How do you resolve the conflicts in your relationship? I think that it's, like I said, it depends on the, the severity or the urgentness of the issue. Um, but my approach is if we can't put information into the pool where we can get an understanding, the pool of understanding, then I'm going to step back for a little bit, give it some air, and then we'll try to revisit it at a time when there's less uh, Heat. Less, <laughs> heat. <laughs> Less fellowship in the. <laughs> you turn the exhaust fan on in the kitchen and pull some of the heat out, huh? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, reapproach is my, is my preferred method. Reapproach. Yeah, but sometimes things aren't able to do that and you just have to bear down and just work through it. I really dislike those kinds of conversations, but it's a part of life and that's his preferred method. Let's just. Pull the band-aid off. Does conflict make either of you uncomfortable? I would deal with conflict. I'd much rather not have it, but I know that it's a part of getting an understanding because if my thoughts conflict with uh, her thoughts, then there's an understanding that needs to be reached so that we can both come out better you know, and grow from it. So I never run from conflict. Um, I actually more so run to conflict, <laughs> but, but, I, but I don't like it. You know, not, not my really anything to do. But. That was, that was, that was my next question. Uh, you, you, <laughs> you beat me to it. Do you try to avoid, you know, some people avoid conflict, even if it means not resolving or they just, make concession after concession um, in order for the sake of peace. So you don't necessarily avoid conflict. You, you know, you rip the bandaid off and say, come on, let's deal with this. How about you, Evangelist Jones? Do you, do you try to avoid conflict? Um, Does it make you feel uncomfortable? I I don't like conflict. I feel like it's a detractor Mm -hmm. um, in a relationship, Mm -hmm. you know, so I prefer not to have that conflict. You know, mm-hmm. I know that sometimes it's needed to go to the next level, but I know that it can be dysfunctional or damaging. So yeah. I prefer not to, to engage in that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's why I make the concessions I would say. <laughs> okay, so that's your that's your way of avoiding conflict. Just go ahead just go ahead and concede. Mm-hmm. Okay. Unless it's something unless it's something that I really have a strong 
conviction on. Mm-hmm. Of course, you know, like if it comes to, if it's something godly, there is no confession. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it is what it is, right? Um, so you stand, you stand, you stand your ground for your convictions. Absolutely. No, no, I know we're totally off script here. Um, is there ever a clash in convictions? Mm, not really, because I think our perspectives we match in perspectives, you know. And and and, and would you say values as well? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And our approach as to how to get to the finish line that definitely conflicts. But after thirty-one years, you've got a pretty good idea of of how to approach the conflicts that you have within your relationship and then find some kind of uh, amiable uh, conclusion so that it's a a win-win for both of you. I would, I would assume that. Is that correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, let's talk about one of the, another, another one of the big issues in marriages that, that, that really tear marriages apart. And that's, that's money. Mm -hmm. Um, Who manages the the money and investments in the Jones house. So um, I manage our domestic bills and you know he and then just his own finances outside of that. Mm-hmm. Now was this an agreement that was made thirty years ago, or is this something that just kind of evolved over the marriage? I would think that it was actually an evolutionary process, you know, by trial and error. Mm-hmm. Um, who does better with uh, taking care of certain things, making sure stuff is paid on time, you know, those types of things. So it is a developmental thing. I don't think that anybody coming in knows who's stronger in this area, that area, because all it takes is one or two situations to find that out. You mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. And uh, once you figure it out, then I think you go with the best person for the job. I mean, so yeah, no, it's not something that you just got to know. It's uh, done through trial and error. So being head of the household, being the spiritual leader of the house does not necessarily mean that you rule with an iron fist and you've got total control over everything. You find out who has strengths in whatever area and that person husband or wife they function in their strengths as in this financial situation absolutely that sums up our whole relationship yeah, that is, <laughs> that's, 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 all together, you know. whoever is the best that yeah. does that part yeah. <laughs> well that sounds Sounds like a wonderful, wonderful marriage. It sounds like you guys are going to make another 50 or 60 years in that in that marriage. As it relates to um, joint accounts, where, you know, savings account, checkings accounts, et cetera. Do you have joint accounts or a joint account or some joint accounts, but also have separate accounts as well? We have separate accounts, but we have a joint pool of money. Mm hmm. And that works out best for you. Yeah, that works out for us. Okay. Uh, Lady Gwen and I, um, oh boy, I I better leave that alone because I can't remember how many years it's been. (laughs) want you to have peace i know i think i think i think it's going on 43 years <laughs> i think it's going on 43 years i think we just celebrated 43 years if i'm wrong she will definitely correct me that works out well for us having a joint count but also having the separate the separate accounts but then making sure that both parties have access to what's happening with the finances within the house. Who should be, or who is the disciplinarian in your family? Who was? Who was, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you're not disciplining those grown folk. <laughs> yeah. We'd go to jail if we try. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> so, you know, like I said, it's a um, part of us being young. One thing I will say is what we found is that works best is doing what works for your marriage and your situation. So for us, we tried with my husband being the disciplinary solely of the children, but he worked a lot. So Mm -hmm. that was kind of (laughs) hard. So was it, was it one of those situations I'm going to tell your dad when he gets home? Yeah. 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 
we tried that for a while, um, and that had, you know, trial and error with some positive things and not so positive. Then we moved to the, we used to say, good cops, bad cops. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We did that for several years. Um, now, what was that? I, I missed that. The good cops, bad cops. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Where one parent holds the the favor or they're able to get the information from okay. the children. Wow. You know, they'll share more with one, and one is the disciplinary and for that. You all were strategic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've got, we've got some stories. <laughs> uh, and then we kind of moved on to the, you know, rationalization. Like, does that make sense? Like, mm-hmm. if you saw me doing that. Would that make sense to you if we did that? And they'd be like, well, no, mom. Well, no, dad. That, that would be horrible. Okay, well, you can't do it either. Yeah. And they, that kind of helped a little bit more as they got older. So I guess it really depends on what phase of life the children are in as to which approach worked the best. Yeah. As we prepare to close for a um, couple that's considering marriage or newlyweds, Mm -hmm. what advice would you give? And let's speak to the, the saved young lady, the saved young man that's dating engaged or a newlywed what advice would you give them well i would think that for for saved young people that are in those phases i mean if you're looking to pick a mate first of all you got to make sure a number one that they are saved Mm -hmm. because i think that for a female a saved man you decided to come by, I mean, as it relates to his developmental process, Mm -hmm. um, because he's definitely going to need God to help him to understand how to love his wife, how to love his children, how to be those things that is needful as he grows in a relationship with his wife. So save is the first thing. Second thing is somebody that, that genuinely loves her enough to be able to make sacrifices that make sense, you know, because if you make a sacrifice that don't really make sense, then it's no no good to her. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you can go out and, 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 and buy her a new car, but if you don't have a place to live, then what right. good was that? Right, you know? right. So you take her out to a $200 dinner, you mm-hmm. know, and she needs you to help pay a light bill. That doesn't make sense. So. Yeah. <laughs> You, you just ate the you just ate the bill money. <laughs> you just ate the bill money, so you know, and and those things come from mentoring from people that are around, and you know, he can trust and 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 get some positive, good feedback from men that are saved and been in marriage for a while. So you know, you need those those few things, and even growing in marriage and being newlyweds, you need to be able to have somebody that you can go to. You know, so I would say that. You need a, a good pool of people around you and to uh, be honest enough to say that I just don't know yeah. and find out the information, you know. Lady Jones, uh, what would you say to that 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 single young lady or that, that newlywed? Uh, she's coming to you and, and she's trying to get some some basic advice. What what one or two points would you would you make? I would say that the person that you date is not the person that you marry. Mm. And there is an evolution that occurs in marriage and you have to be malleable enough to be able to stick where there is a deficit or there is a crevice and to push back where, you know, it's protruding out too much. You have to be able to fit into those places that you're needed to so that your relationship will work. And that every relationship is different. You know, no one will have my husband and I's relationship Mm -hmm. with you and Lady Gwen. Mm -hmm. You have to build your relationship based on who you have married. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. You can't expect you can't expect Obama and you marry Joe from down the street. Gwen would love for me to be like uh, Obama. (laughs) (laughs) And she could be my Michelle. (laughs) Yeah, and so that's not who we are. So we have to be able to 
um, live with who we are. Mm -hmm. And every day you have to give 100%, and they need to be able to give 100%. And if you give your all and they give their all, you won't have 200, but you'll have 1,000. So, you know, you'll get more than what you give if you give your all, is what I would say to any married woman or man. Well, Elder Jeffrey and Evangelist Carletta Jones, it has been delightful to to spend this time with you talking about making marriages work. And you all have a wonderful, wonderful marriage, a wonderful relationship. You've shared some important insights on what it takes to be married for 30 plus years. And still like each other, not only like each other, but but love one another, love God. And both of you are very active in ministry together. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much for having us and look forward to talking to you again. Soon. All right, friends, that's all the time that we have for this episode. I hope you have enjoyed Today's episode, which was produced by Associate Pastor Corey Lyndon Bellamy Sr. Be safe, stay healthy, God bless.